we're okay. Um, I'll, I'll wait until the recording has started. The recording started. Okay, perfect. So I can Alrighty, you guys. So Thomas is from the Manoa Career Center over on Oahu. Um, he is in charge of all inner island career development and skills like that. Um, one reason why I thought Thomas would be a great asset to our um, presentation today, well, not presentation, but just our overall kind of event to introduce each other. And I know last time we had spoken a lot about career development and more networking opportunities. So I thought in terms of career development, Thomas would be the perfect candidate to speak today. So thanks so much, Thomas, for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, again, to kind of pick up where I left off or to start over a little bit, um, you know, so we'll focus on networking, um, how to, what it is and how to do it. And basically, you know, um, really in a professional setting, um, there's different ways to network. Um, I know I was talking a little bit about networking for jobs, but basically, you know, one thing to do is to really, you know, um, when you approach networking, you know, think about just getting to know people, having a little informal icebreaker, um, you know, dressing the part, being comfortable, um, being at uh, events that, um, you know, are, where you share a common interest and, um, you know, just know what you're, you're wanting to network for. Networking is really, you know, communication and also um, building connections with people. And so, um, you know, it could be for, you know, looking for a school that you're thinking about going to or looking for jobs, or it also could be just for fellowships. So in this case, you know, thinking of um, getting together, sharing a common interest, uh, all of you being involved with the Rot Rotary, Rotor Act, um, you know, being involved with community service events, you know, sharing your information. Um, you know, when it comes to professional networking too, um, you want to have some questions, you want to have your resume ready if, if you know, you're, it, come down, if it comes down to where you're, you're thinking of looking for another job or changing careers. And really, you know, taking an assessment of yourself of what your strengths are, what, you know, being, and being, being able to articulate those strengths, you know, your, you know, your skills in um, communication, public speaking, or experience in a certain area or expertise. So being able to articulate that and being able to ask what you want. Now, a lot of people kind of have misconceptions about networking that, you know, um, it's only for extroverts. But networking, there's a way to do it where you, um, if you're an introvert, you're shy, which like me, you know, if you, you know, feel like networking is something that you have to really be an extrovert, it's not that way. You can make it into make it into something that's advantageous for you by having some questions. Now there is a form of networking called informational interviews. Have you ever heard of that? Has anybody heard of informational interviews? That is a way to network and it's very useful. It's really 15 to 20 minutes of you know talking to a professional, um, asking them questions about, you know, what they do, uh, how they got into this field, um, and then telling them, giving, the, giving them your resume and saying, hey, you know, this is, um, you know, I have strengths in this, this, and this, um, sharing your resume with them. You know, of course, at this point, it's all on Zoom. And so really getting to know, um, getting, contact information and being able to share information about yourself. And um, if you're on LinkedIn, that's also an excellent way to, you know, identify people who are good contacts. Um, and it's a good way to find out about a career, about, or if not a career, it could be about a school, whatever the topic is, or whatever your common interest that you share. If it's about fellowship, it, you know, 
if we're talking about informal networking, then maybe the topic is just, you know, um, tell me about some of the experience you've had in, in the Rotor Act and, and what would you advise for me as a new member? What are some things, you know, that are fun to do? What's the most, how can, how can I um, become, um, how can I develop my leadership skills? Um, things like that. So think about, you know, whatever the questions are that you have at, at this, you know, with whatever group that you're networking with. And, um, you know, think of some icebreakers. And really, you know, if you have some questions, then it's easier for you, especially if you're a shy person. You're kind of, you're not being interviewed. You're the one who's kind of interviewing other people, you know? And so, and I think that's what's gonna make your networking good. Also, you know, do you have a recommendation for someone who I could talk to? Can I let them know you referred me to them? That's, that's all part of the networking questions that you can have. Now, when I was talking about informational interviews, Another word for it is career conversation. It's about 15 to 20 minutes. It's not long because you have to really be mindful of the other person's time. But when you're networking with people, you know, and doing it that way, um, you know, that's a good way to make connections, to find out about opportunities, find out about jobs you never knew about. And this is really important during this time, you know, when um, opportunities are sparse you know, things that you see online. I was talking a little bit earlier before we started recording that, you know, the job market is kind of like an iceberg. And the things that you see that are advertised like on Indeed and things like that, that's about 25% of what's out there. The other 75% are what they call the hidden job market. The way to tap into that is to talk to people. It's to network and ask for advice. Because, you know, it is, you know, you may have heard this before. It's all about who you know. Right. And so, so this is another way, another method. Now, it, it doesn't have to be as formal as what I'm talking about, you know, and I, I know that, that today, what are some good ways to network? It's really, you know, being comfortable together like this. Start with people, you know, uh, start with people who, you know, share a common interest with you. So like, you know, this, this organization that we have here, um, people getting together. Um, you share a common interest, so think of some questions and get it started, break some ice, you know. Um, again, and think also quality, not quantity. It's, you know, it's not about how many people you know, but, but more about the quality of your connections. And I say this, you know, we do LinkedIn workshops and, you know, if you're on LinkedIn, it's not so important to have hundreds of contacts as much as it is to have some really quality contacts who when you network who you network with if they if they were able to kind of steer you in the direction you were looking for or a job you're looking for or a school you're thinking about transferring to or a grad school you know that's really how you can um, network and so get to know things like LinkedIn um, get used to at this time until we all get vaccinated, get used to using Zoom. Um, you, know, and, you know, I, again, I apologize. I didn't really put together a, a, a formal presentation for this and I don't want to lecture to you too much. I'll open it up to some questions that you might've had. Yeah, I did have a question. Um, have you noticed any major shifts in networking from being you know, open out and about to being a pandemic environment, like with the current healthcare crisis going on. Yes. You know, yes. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's, we're seeing a lot of students who had internships and they lost them. You know, we're seeing a lot of um, job loss in certain areas and gain in certain areas too, though, you know, in, certain jobs that you know are essential you know um certain fields um and and so networking um i think I've, i'm seeing a lot more people using did you know signing up for workshops 
using more online resources now, of course, we have to. So, you know, I'm noticing, you know, our workshops and our career fairs are venues for networking, and I'm, I'm seeing an increase in the number of people participating in these things. You know, usually we would have a workshop that was in person, and we'd wait to see how many people would sign up, and if we got 10, we'd be happy. Now we're getting, we're having our workshops, and there's like 70, 80 people signed up, you know, on Zoom, and so it's great in a way. Um, so, so, you know, the pandemic is horrible, but there's, there's blessings too, you know. Uh, and so, you know, again, any opportunities that you have to participate in any kinds of webinars and, and, and online networking events, you know, career fairs, um, events that you plan through uh, Rotaract, um, things like that, that's great, you know, and, and I'm noticing more participation that way, you know. So. Thank you, Thomas. And so uh, why don't we start doing some networking? I think that's what um, we people wanted to do last time to get to know each other. And um, you just, some of these, Thomas, some of these people are very seasoned. Jonathan is a commercial banker at, at First Fine Bank. So he's pretty seasoned at uh, networking because he's got to go talk to his clients, right, Jonathan? But Let's get to know each other. So how about, um, I was gonna do breakout rooms, but I think we're, we've got a small enough group that we can go uh, right here all together. So if you can go what name, your name, what club you're with, the company you're with and what you do. And um, then, then later on, we can go more into, um, you know, what your clubs are doing or what you wanna do with this club, what, what you want to um, uh, accomplish with uh, this group and who you wanna hear from. Okay, so Vanessa and then Jonathan. Thank you, Naomi. Hi, everyone. My name is Vanessa. I am with the, uh, I'm the president of the Rotary Lahaina Sunset Club. Um, currently, I work with American Savings Bank. I've been with them for eight years. I uh, started in Kahului, but I'm currently the branch manager of Lahaina. Um, a typical day is servicing customers. I also uh, manage a business portfolio. Um, home equities, anything retail banking, you let me know, I got you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jonathan, I'm with First Hawaiian Bank as a commercial banker. Uh, actually just recently moved to Hawaii. So um, spent, uh, went to college and spent, well, I spent my whole life pretty much in Texas, but had family ties to the island. Um, so wife had an opportunity to be a uh, doctor out here. And so we, we moved on out here. So um, my day to day is, you know, pretty much it's commercial banking. So uh, dealing with our commercial clients and the needs they have and, you know, looking at opportunities for them and how we can uh, provide leverage for them. So. Thank you. And probably Poki is going to ask you what kind of doctor your wife is. But let's go to Jack and then um, Poki. Sure. Uh, my name is Jack Roney. I work with Cushman Wakefield Cheney Brooks and to to um, to follow Jonathan is a little coincidental. I'm actually in commercial leasing. Uh, we do some sales in my team here, but for the most part, I do a lot of industrial landlord representation. And um, yeah, that's uh, kind of my background and happy to be online. Oh, also, I'm from uh, Rotary Honolulu. Sorry, yes, it's me next. Miss Naomi. So, hi, everybody. I'm um, Poki. I'm a doctor at Kukua Kalihi Valley. My background is uh, geriatric neurology. So, it's kind of where I'm at now. I'm in the Gray's memory clinics and uh, run our COVID clinic also. Um, but I wear kind of a few hats at Little Needle Home. I'm the director of nursing, but I also um, am part of operations as well as our financial um, services. And then I'm an assistant professor at Chaminade, and I'm part of the um, Honolulu Rotary. Wow. Hi, Amanda. So it's name, rank, and serial number. No, <laughs> your, your club, um, uh, yeah. what, what you're doing for your career. Sure. Um, so I'm also with the Honolulu Club. I just joined, moved to the island in October. Um, I work with the University of Hawaii Foundation 
in corporate compliance and administration, running the strategic programs for operations. And uh, recently joined the club, recently moved to the island and um, really enjoy helping do the background work to make donating and supporting the university possible. Oh, wow. Boy, we could use your um, your talent, <laughs> your, your <laughs> insights. Right, Vanessa? <laughs> OK, uh, Kelsey and then uh, Keith. Sure. So I actually work for Maui Gym Sunglasses. Um, I coordinate with their corporate gifts department. So any type of events or sponsorships that you're seeing, um, like the Maui Invitational, the Women's Classic, um, I did all that. I traveled domestically for about five years on the mainland. So it was mainland uh, Mexico, Canada, and Caribbean. So I did most of their events. But then I uh, recently moved here and I'm just assisting with the retail division just because it is a pandemic. So we unfortunately don't have any events or sponsorships going right now. But fingers crossed that later on next year we can get some back going in there. So fingers crossed though. But yep. Thanks. Hey, Keith. I think, sorry, I am uh, in the dark area, so I don't have a video screen right now. But uh, my name is Keith Greer. I am the uh, development manager with Hawaii Care Choices, which is, used to be hospice of Hilo here on the Big Island. Uh, and I'm with the Rotary Club of South Hilo. And so my job is to do fundraising for our hospice organization. Uh, and most recently, I've been tasked with uh, launching a major gift and planned giving program uh, for our fundraising efforts. Oh. Wow. And, and Keith is famous because he did this project uh, picking up plastics on the beach and he made the Rotary magazine that went to a million members all around the world. Right, Keith? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. We ended up doing a really beautiful uh, beach cleanup project and uh, the Rotarian Magazine reached out to interview us on that. And uh, we ended up being part of the feature article in that magazine, which was pretty awesome. That is very awesome. And Keith is the president elect for his club. So you, uh, Keith, you could talk to Vanessa because she could tell you about being a president. <laughs> oh yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm a returning president for next year. So we'll be in the same classes. Oh yeah, oh, good. So it won't, it's not that bad if you're coming back for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so you, you guys as president and, and young professionals, you know that uh, we need young professionals in the clubs to um, bring some fresh ideas. And you know, we talked about how we need um, interesting speakers and projects. And, and that's what we want from this group is to talk about what we, you can get out of Rotary and networking is part of it. Meeting people, making those connections, because you know, when you're talking about fundraising and, and events, you, know, you can talk to Kelsey about an event or um, Amanda with fundraising. So it's this connection that makes us even stronger to work together. So um, we can do webinars as well to do trainings so professional development. Uh, so people who are interested in, in changing careers and um, doing resumes, you know, that's where Thomas can um, talk with um, doing a webinar. So um, what, what are some of the things that you want, you guys want out of Rotary? What do you want to get? What value does Rotary give you? Personally, I like a lot of the volunteer opportunities. I think those are a great place to not only network, but just give back to the community. That's what I was going to say as well. I initially joined Rotary because my boss told me to, and I thought it was going to be, um, you know, to, to pursue my career development and get more, you know, business that way. But really, it's... Um, it's not even about that anymore. It's just about giving back to the community, like Kelsey said, um, getting involved, meeting new people, and just feeling good about the work that we do. So it's, it's been really um, fun that way and rewarding. Yeah. Okay, Jonathan, did your boss tell you to join? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I, I joined on my own. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was looking for you know, network opportunity and then being, you know, new on the island, looking for ways to volunteer. 
Um, and so kind of saw it as an avenue. Plus, if you if you look at so I, I didn't say I'm with uh, Rotary Club of Poipu Beach. And if you look on the South Shore, there really isn't as much activity when it comes to charities. Um, and so that ended up being the first one I attended and I liked it. So <laughs> didn't, didn't try any other club. Uh, they really need you in that club, don't they? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have a good member size, but I would say active members is, is can be tough. Um, mm. So I brought, I brought on quite a few younger people to the group. So hopefully yeah. they will help balance it out a little bit and, and get our club active. Yeah. Um, I think the Honolulu Club has a, um, a task force on young professionals. Pokey, Jack, is it, do you guys have that? Did anybody else answer? Jack, do you I, know? I, no, that I would not be surprised if we do. I. Um... I don't know for sure though. Well, I can actually speak to that guys. I know I just uh -oh. joined the club, but I <laughs> actually know about it. <laughs> um, so it is in, I'd say it's preliminary phases. Been talking with Gwen Yamamoto Lau, the president elect and a uh, future next president elect Lila Berg about it. And that's kind of something that I brought to um, kind of for me, it was important to join as a member and uh, they're looking into fellowships. So they're looking into taking on like a young person in the community and essentially saying, let's make them a rotary fellow. Let's sponsor their membership. Let's get them in the club and let's like teach them some leadership components that'll help them uh, network and recruit. Um, and so I've actually put them in touch with some Rotarians back in the San Antonio club from which I came because it's, you know, a 350 member club in the U40s as we called it are uh, probably about 50 to 75 of those members. So the initiative was really that you're not the only one, you know, when you join a club and um, Honolulu is an aging club, to be honest. So really talking about the legacy behind that. So I know that Gwen and, and Lila have that kind of on those future years as a priority. That's great. So it's the leadership skills, um, and the, um, the training uh, besides the projects and the, and the networking, right, Amanda? Okay, am I frozen or is everybody frozen? Uh, I think Amanda's frozen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think she's frozen. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, so I think the networking part is important. And so I think all of these piece, pieces go together, networking, the projects, um, and how we can um, get some professional development. So want to get some ideas on um, some webinars that we can invite not only young professionals, but also the Rotaractors, so the ones in the, um, the colleges. And we have community-based Rotaractors as well, who are um, outside of the college, but uh, within the, that age group. So um, any ideas on you know, speakers that, that you'd like to hear or do some presentation for, uh, for the greater group, the group of young professionals? You know, Pokey, you went through the entrepreneur program, yeah? And, and a lot of the, um, the young professionals are entrepreneurs. So were there any classes that you might uh, want to recommend? Oh gosh. I mean, that was a great program. I think any of them would be, uh, would be worthy for, for us to, to have here. Um, I don't have to think about it and go through exactly which ones and send you, but I think I mean, in my mind, all of all of them. But then I'm also wondering when we're talking about speakers, Naomi, if you know whether we send you our own recommendations. I mean, what about starting with all of us who are here? Oh yeah. You know, yeah. We could all hear from each other, and then that's a great way for us to get to know each other and hear about what we're doing and our work and learn from each other too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what about the timing of these sessions? Um, would it, is it uh, six o'clock a good time or should it be seven o'clock or earlier? I like after work hours, so. I'm... I think six o'clock is fine. Six? 
Yeah, six is fine. Yeah, either six is fine. Okay. Six o'clock. Okay. So, um, is there, I think Kelsey had some ideas on some speakers too, and I bet um, Jonathan's got some really good connections with speakers as well in the business community. So um, how about if we had some suggestions and we could all um, agree on maybe um, a speaker every time. So maybe a speaker on a short topic and then uh, a couple of other speakers from, from the group to talk about what you do, um, a topic that you're familiar with to share with everybody. You know, so like Pokey can talk about mental health or <laughs> Kupuna care or something. <laughs> You have so many hats, Pookie. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, right now in the advocacy legislative hat as we're all prepping for the for the opening. But anyways, yeah, I don't know. I think that's a great idea. Can we, Nami, do you want all the suggestions right now and we discuss it or can we just send, send you our suggestions also? Well, if you have some now, you can put it in the chat and then um, I can circulate the chat and we can ask uh, the other people who couldn't make it. And then if we can meet um, every month on the Wednesday, six o'clock. So this is the third Wednesday or is the second Wednesday? Third Wednesday. So third Wednesday of every month and then um, people can volunteer to do a short presentation. So if we give what, five or 10 minutes to speak to do a presentation for the um, members of this committee. Would that be enough time? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then um, Amanda, if you've got some um, ideas of speakers um, that maybe if you're doing something at the Honolulu Club and you wanna open it up to um, the, the other young professionals that you may be open and, um, and either do it at this time and invite your club or uh, invite the, these meetings to your um, your meeting because we can put the meeting information into the uh, district website. So, Amanda, is it is it going to be at your meetings or separate? Sorry, say that it's going to be at our meeting. So, when you bring in your speakers, will it be at your regular meeting or separate oh. webinar? Speakers for like the so, general operations of the club or the young the young members initiative? The young members initiative. I don't think they've started actually like, I think that's coming in the next, uh, with Gwen with the next presidency. So I think that's next summer. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, that's down the road, yeah. Okay. Uh, but if you have some ideas to share with this group, then we can um, we can start that now. Um, so Evan, we're talking about um, speakers and some webinars doing separate. And at these meetings, we're going to do it six o'clock on Wednesdays um, to have uh, different members of this this group um, talk about um, their career or uh, other topics that they want to share with everybody. So you got some ideas of um, topics. Uh, webinars, things that people um, from this group would like to learn about? Well, you know, Toastmasters might be good. Well, I mean, so I, I literally just finished a Toastmasters meeting. <laughs> but uh, I, I do think um, one of the things we could incorporate with this one specifically too would be um, kind of a Toastmasters speech and you incorporate it into sort of this. Um, and I can kind of help you in regards to putting something together if that's what you guys are interested in. Um, I guess for webinars, I'm not too sure, I guess, what do you mean by that? So um, a training webinar, so we can um, uh, have a, a speaker, maybe a panel, so take a topic like um, networking and have several speakers talk about networking, some skills, and then um, people can bring in, um, so if you're at the bank, Vanessa, you can bring in some of your junior um, officers, um, some people that are looking at being a commercial banker or um, a personal banker, then they can, you know, also attend. So um, offering it for um, other people. So um, Toastmasters has leadership um, uh, uh, classes too that they can offer. Um, they, they have this thing called uh, table topics where if, if somebody asks you what is rotary, then you kind of know um, to be on your feet and, and 
there's some skill um, involved with that too. So, um, so if you can email or put it in the chat, then we can um, look at setting up some of the webinars at different times. But these uh, meetings, we could just go um, uh, within the group talking about what you do. Okay, so we, we have um, some more time. Is, did you wanna share uh, a little bit more about what you do or some topic that you wanna talk about? You know, Pokey, you do so much at Kali Valley. What's, what's happening over there? Oh goodness, I mean, a lot. We have so many programs going on. I don't even think I know all of them. I mean, right now with COVID going on, that's where, of course, the focus is at, as well as um, the community and keeping them healthy and safe. So there's a lot of outreach, but there's many facets. I think when they think of KKB, they just think of a health center, but I mean, it's more the community. Like we have whole Aina in the back of Kalihi Valley, right? Where it's a, uh, we have Laalapa, all their gardens there. Um, our whole community goes up there, grows their own food takes it home and do, um, I don't know, there's medicine. Yeah, that'd be like a whole presentation. Then we have um, the medical, the dental, the behavioral part where the providers, all of us are out there delivering food, um, you know, knocking on doors, making sure everybody is safe and okay. Um, the vaccines are here. So we're gearing up now for that, you know, to, to roll that out and see how that goes and doing a lot of research and data collection. Um, a lot of operations and budgets going on too, grants. I didn't, there's so much happening there right now. And we're one of the hot spots, So we're right in the thicket of, you know, the COVID numbers spiking and, and trying to take care of that. So. so what's your recommendation? Take it, take the vaccine now or, or wait? So I can't. So that's everybody's choice. I can't really say what I think. I will tell you what I'm going to do. Yes, I'm going to take the vaccine. I mean, it's a federal mandate, right? You can't force anybody to take a vaccine, but um, I understand both sides. But then, you know, like when I talk to my mother, a lot of times she'll tell me, she's like, I understand people, you know, want their rights and not to vaccine, but she's like, none of you guys grew up when polio was around. She's like, none of you, she's like, the younger ones have never seen what it's like when, um, you know, when, when disease comes through, she's like, no, you guys haven't experienced, you know, the, um, the iron lung cages or watched, you know, other things happen. So I understand both sides, but the vaccine is safe. Um, even immunocompromised people can take it, right? Pfizer has already been approved. It's the one, it's a two shot series. You take one, 21 days later, Moderna is up with FDA right now. That's a two shot series again with 28 days. There is just like the virus a lot. We don't know. We don't know how long and sorry guys, not to make a plug, but these are questions that everybody always asks me. No, we don't know how long um, your immunity will last or how long it will last. We just know what we know from trials right now. So that'll come, but you know, this could be the beginning to the end, but we're still gonna have to do masks and social distancing and all that. So, um, but in short to your answer, yes, I would say um, to take it. The trials have, have been very good um, and they use new technology to make this mRNA vaccine. So. Um, I think that, yes, it's a good idea to do it. We need to get out of, out of this, right? It's hurting us financially, um, our health, it's just, it's hitting us on so many fronts. So we need to somehow bring an end to this. Yeah. And, and, you know, with Rotary, we have been, um, uh, vaccinating 400 million children for polio yeah. every year. And, yes. and we, we, there are a lot of people in the United States that are um, saying that they're against vaccination. And so, you know, that is, that could be a program for Rotary to take up to encourage vaccination. So, yeah, uh, jo yeah. Jonathan on the, on Kauai, you guys are trying to uh, keep it safe over there. So what's happening on Kauai? I mean, yeah. For uh, health, it's been really good. I mean, with my wife working in the hospital, um, it's, you know, uh, it's been good for on that side, but I would say, you know, commercially and uh, for the economy, it's been extremely tough. Um, and so you're, you're seeing, you know, where I have friends mainland where, you know, they're, they're back at their jobs and stuff like that. A lot of people out here, you know, are employed in tourism or employed in something relating to tourism. And so, um, you know, most of our friends, our age, if they don't work remotely, they've lost their jobs. And so, you know, it's just a, it's a very different 
or, you know, or the second income that they had from doing, you know, other work has gone away too. Um, so, you know, that's been very difficult. So I'm all about the vaccine and um, I know my wife's going to be getting one uh, hopefully maybe next week. Um, but anyways, soon. Uh, obviously for most of us, so we won't have access to it being younger, healthier, um, for quite a while. So although I'll, I'll be game for it, uh, I don't think I'll, I'll get access to it till, you know, end of spring, maybe early summer. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Um, Evan, what's, uh, Evan is the president of the Kahala Sunrise Club. So Evan, what's going on with, uh, with your career and what you're doing? Oh, um, you know, I had a pretty good year, uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm in real estate and um, I just am finishing up my fourth year. So I think that there's a part where, uh, you know, you grow your network enough and especially for my first client, I'm sorry, my first client um, is actually upgrading at this moment. So we're closing on Friday on their house. Um, but it's been fun kind of working on the business this month. And I think that's where, you know, um, ultimately, if you're in sort of this type of role, it's not only what you do well, uh, it sort of ends up being uh, learning to build a business. And um, you know, it's kind of nice talking to other entrepreneurs, but also other realtors that are looking to grow their business. I have a little network group of people that started around my age, not my age, but how many years I've been in the industry um, and what they've done. And I went to Brokers Open today and uh, it's a luxury agent. Her name is Beth Chang. And so she probably sells like 20 to $30 million a year. Um, she gave some advice. So it's been really nice. You know, it's nice to find something you love and you get paid for it. Um, but at least on the rotary side, uh, we had our last meeting of the, the year this morning. And, um, you know, sadly, uh, one of our members passed away suddenly. So it was really nice to we kind of had a tribute um, and a celebration of life on the Rotary style today. So, um, you know, the boyfriend and um, one of the cousins came out and had a little eulogy. Um, and we shared stories about her um, and her Rotary. Uh, one of our past presidents, Ryan, he puts together videos, uh, a lot of our professional videos. So he put something together for her um, that they actually had sort of a conversation about Rotary in 2016. Um, so it was nice to, to see that. And one of our members also kind of is a singer songwriter on the side. So it was kind of a nice tribute and end of the year for us. Yeah, uh, thanks. I, th I heard that was really nice. So Pookie, you might know Francine Y. She passed. Mm -hmm. So they had a um, tribute to her this morning. Um, and you and on Maui, you guys lost uh, Tom Luthenegger yeah, yesterday, so we're losing people. Um, thanks, Evan. Jacob, what's going on? Uh, what's going on with what? Your club and you. Um, yeah, club is great. Uh, we are we are doing a tree planting project up on the North Shore. Uh, planting 5,000 trees um, uh, at, at Gunstock Ranch. So I'm going up there with a bunch of other people, other Rotary Clubs are joining us. And uh, um, yeah, it's been really successful so far. Um, as far as me, I don't know, I wasn't here throughout the whole thing. I still haven't really introduced myself, but uh, my name is Jacob Roberts. Um, came out here to Hawaii as a marine biologist working on the tuna boats. And for the last year, I've been working as a, a solar advisor for Sunrun, helping people get solar for their roof. Um, uh, what else? I don't know. <laughs> your, your club, Jacob, the Eco Club, um, yep. is a cause-based club on the yes. environment, right? So. Um, some of, the, I think uh, one of the projects that April is talking about is picking up plastics from the beaches. So she wants to go from ridge to reef. Um, so divers can go pick up um, rubbish in the reef too. So um, that's a project that, you know, want to do uh, statewide. And uh, that's where, you know, we can make a difference. Yeah. 
also moving upstream too is, you know, we were cleaning up beaches, but there's so many parts of the city that never get cleaned up that, uh, that have a direct line into, um, into the ocean. There are trails that never get picked up. They're getting pretty bad too. So, yeah. Yep. Can expand our idea of you know what cleanups are and where we're where we're going. Incorporate some exercise and getting outdoors with that. Yeah, but we we need to do that um, to clean up the plastics from the the earth. So you know, doing these projects will will help with networking with people because when you go on a project, you're side by side with someone that you you didn't maybe get to know as well, and so you can meet meet people there. So. Um, Good job with the Eco Club. And, you know, clubs can be focused on certain things. People are interested in certain things. So, you know, so if you're in commercial banking or you're in business banking and you want to do a networking with businesses, we have the um, Rotary Means Business Fellowship. And there you can network with business people, get clients or, you know, you know, being a commercial banker, you know who, who the players are. You can refer people um, to other people. Um, other contacts that you have. And so you're the connector in the in the organization too. And that's what we want to do. Be the connector, be the uh, one who makes an impact on, on on the world, do good in the world. So Amanda, you um, you were a member with uh, the San Antonio Club for a while. So what do you see as some of the differences or some of the ideas that you can pass on to us? Uh, sure, I mean, one of the reasons I joined the Honolulu Club is because I think it mirrors that club in many ways. It's you know got a lot of local projects and a lot of long-standing international ones. I think um, the speakers definitely are a significant appeal, and I think that each club has its own priorities. But I think um, you know when we were recruiting young members, one of the big things was making sure that the program was kind of giving them the sneak peek or the advanced news or something that was kind of ahead of um, when it would be more generally available. And that was always enticing to members of any age. Um, I think the other thing too, though, was that uh, we had a young members board that kind of reported into the other one. And we had specific programming that was tied to young membership. Um, and most of that was connected with recognizing that uh, younger members have different needs from members who've been in a long time. You know, most of us are younger, we're starting families, we're earlier in our careers, so we have different obligations with our time. And so I thought that differentiation was nice. At the same time, you know, my sponsor was a member in the club for over 30 years. And so the membership we had was really important. And that's actually why I chose the Honolulu Club too, is because, you know, two people kind of offered to help mentor me as I moved to Honolulu and, and be a part in helping me be successful here, um, both personally and professionally. So I think, um, you know, that active engagement and investment by the senior members and the recognition that young members are looking for different things is important. And finally, we did... Um, recognized award in town, which was outstanding young Rotarian or outstanding young San Antonian. And so it was open to anyone Rotary or not. And it was a recognition of someone who both business wise and philanthropically was someone to keep your eye on in town worth recognizing, worth celebrating. And I think a lot of engagement it was me to step in as a new member but also a lot of concentrated focus and until you reached 40 you were in this under 40 group and you had that special dedicated checking in mentorship projects that were specific to you um and then, i mean that was 300 so obviously four um, or I started interacting at 24 and then um, joined and, and stayed connected. And I think the recognition that people of different ages and different times in their career just might need something different to make the 
investment in Rotary, and they might only do it if they felt like Rotary was investing. Uh, yeah, exactly. And because the, our clubs are smaller, that's why we wanted to start this group so that you can have an opportunity to um, be with um, like-minded people and you can do projects, you can have speakers that are of, your, of interest to you. So the takeaway is you can make a difference in your club. So with, um, you know, Vanessa and uh, Keith, you guys have the power to do some changes in your club. And so you can start a, a group of um, a satellite group or a separate group where they're, the young Rotarians are getting something that is going to be meaningful for, for them. But if not, then staying within this group, you can um, do projects together. We can do multi-club projects. We can um, do um, networking. So um, one of the ideas came last time was that we do some networking and it'll be a, in form of a social. So Tiara um, said she had an idea of going pub crawling or some kind of um, get together. So later on when we have our vaccines and we can get together, uh, we can do um, socials together in, on each island. We can do a Rotary Means Fellows. So me, Rotary Means Business Fellowship is a pure networking um, opportunity at a social with business people. And so you're just there to pass out your um, business cards and just meet people. And so you can start that um, on your island or in your town as well. So, you know, getting together by areas maybe and put one on, you know, no, no problem to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're coming up to the top of the hour. Um, anything you guys want to bring up or say, and then uh, we can wrap it up. We're, we're all good? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Thank you so much for hosting, Naomi. Thanks, Kelsey. And thanks for bringing um, Thomas here. And so, Thomas, maybe we'll get in contact with you for our road raptors and do, do some career counseling and guidance for the road raptors. Sure. Thank you for having me. Okay. So um, next month, third Thursday, uh, Wednesday at six o'clock. And uh, if you have some suggestions, um, please send them uh, my way and uh, we'll try and get uh, people lined up to speak. And then we can soon do networking again with a, a, a bigger group because there were a lot of people that said that they weren't able to make it tonight. Okay. So happy holidays, everybody. Take care and then look out for those vaccines later on. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks, Jacob. <laughs>